Vito and uh, my wife Joyce up front. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, a son that's over in Smyrna, he's a youth pastor over there. And then my daughter's second grade teacher over in uh, Brooksville. Brooksville. <laughs> well, it says I forget things on the shirt. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, a little about me is uh, I kind of grew up an outdoorsman from the time I was a little, little lad. Uh, my dad, I split time between Wyoming and Florida. Uh, Mom lived in South Florida. My dad, Wyoming, on a buffalo ranch. And when I was out there, my dad taught me everything it was to thrive in the mountains. You know, he taught me how to build my own lean-to. And if I found a cave, sleep in a cave. Uh, you know, just like you see on these shows, like Alone or I don't want to say naked and afraid because I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Thank <But>. you. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, I'd go up in the mountains backpacking with, with a load of food and fishing and pole. And I wouldn't come out until I ran out of food and got tired of eating fish. <laughs> so uh, and in Florida, my dad taught me about all there was in the Everglades. I used to go out there in my airboat all the time and just, that's where I really in love with Florida nature was down in the Everglades. Uh, just uh, spent a lot of time out there. I didn't even go to prom in high school because I was out on my airboat. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, when I got to this area, we moved here in 99 from the Panhandle. I was chasing work down to Orlando. I worked at Lockheed Martin for a while. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I was supposed to uh, advance these pictures as I say as I go along here. So, Did the screen black out? No. It's still there. There we go. So I'm just going to advance them as we go. So if you ever have any questions on what you see up here, you can stop me and say, hey, what about this? And I'll, I'll let you know what I know about what the picture is. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I started off down here just immediately loving the area for its wilderness areas. It just and Seminole County is blessed with just an abundance of uh, wilderness areas, and trails, and state forests. I mean, it's, I spent 25 years down here hiking and kayaking, and camping, all this stuff down here. Just, it's been a thrill. So, I, I mean, I've kayaked all over the state of Florida. Uh, you know, we've done St. John's River, Econ River, Rock Springs. Uh, Lake Norris, which if you've ever been to Lake Norris, the pygmy cypress forest on the western shoreline is amazing. Um, it's just magical. So it's a different species. It's just, it's a smaller version of cypress. They don't really get that big. Huh. So they call them a pygmy or dwarf cypress. It's a very ancient one too. Around where is Lake Norris? Lake Norris is in Lake County. Uh, if you go up past, uh, what's the town Sorrento it's up in the Black Bear Lake near Black Bear uh, uh, the golf course Black Bear Country Club up in that area uh, you can find it on the maps of Lake County it's just gorgeous uh, so I've kayaked through there uh, Fish Eaton Creek is my favorite place in Florida to kayak that has full-size cypress forest that is just amazing uh, I can't. I go 16 miles through the swamps and in, in the, uh, in the uh, fishy creek on my kayak. Camp overnight about eight miles in, uh, and it's something else when you're sunset and you have a Florida panther screaming off in the little in the not too distant. Uh, the hair at the back of my neck went up a little bit, and uh, anyway, uh, it just it's a spectacular place to go kayaking. My favorite in Florida. Uh, we've done Cayo Costa Key, where I've gone uh, out. It's a barrier island on the Gulf of Mexico, so we would kayak over across a bay to the to the barrier island and camp on the on the seaside or the Gulf side. Uh, another beautiful place to go. Uh, ran into manatee and I ran over a bull shark there. That <laughs> I mean, I went to look. He was in four feet of water and thrashing. I felt like I was in a rodeo in my kayak it was going around like I don't know how I didn't 
fall out. But I did. <clears throat> that was exciting. Uh, I have a camera somewhere in Cal DC Island stuck in mud in a mangrove tunnel. There's like a two or three mile long mangrove tunnel there on the bay side. And I hit a place where I really couldn't fit and flipped over and my camera went down, never to be seen again. <laughs> so uh, all these adventures, uh, that was, uh, you know, our kayaking experiences. Getting on to hiking. Uh, oh, I <laughs> these a little too. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll pause for a couple seconds here and hit a few here. Oop, too fast. That's the Yahoo Trail. That sunrise spectacular. This was one of the most amazing dawns I've ever seen. Uh, little Big Econ State Forest at the part of the trailhead. I mean, it, I have a video that shows those just flashing across as it comes up. Wow. Is that from a drone? Yes. Yeah, I did that from the parking area there. Uh, let's see, get one more. Keep going. <clears throat> There's uh, out in the uh, off the Jones Trailhead in the Little Big Econ State Forest. Just, uh, I live for sunrises, and I never miss them, if they're at my home or out in the woods. So, uh, as far as the trails I've been on, you know, like I said, State Forest, I've been on the Jones Trailhead, down through Geneva Wilderness to the Flagler Trail that runs through it. Uh, I've been through the Bar Street east and south on that, the Lockwood Trailhead, and all through those, I mean, countless times. Uh, been in the Lake Harney Wilderness area, which is now my favorite place to catch a sunrise. The observation deck there offers a spectacular view of sunrises. You, you, you got to try it out sometime. It's well worth a little trip up there. Uh, it's also good for, I'm sorry, it's also good for rocket launches. As well. Yes, yeah. yes. What the hour is that? Pardon? Could you repeat what the hour that was? Oh, that's Lake Harney Wilderness? Lake Harney, H-A-R-N-E-Y, H -A -R -N -E -Y. and that's, uh, you know where the Osceola landfill is? You go up out of Geneva, north of there. Uh, I'll look it up, sounds good. Yeah, you can find it on Google Maps, just look up Lake Harney Wilderness, well worth it. <coughs> and uh, that's one from there, in fact. This one here is from the observation deck at Lake Harney Wilderness. <laughs> I called it the uh, eclipse of the sun from a thunderstorm at dawn. Uh, just the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, Chuliota Wilderness, the Yukon Sand Hills Conservation Area, although I don't like the power lines out in that one. You gotta <coughs> kind of parallel them for a while and they buzz and you know, it's no bueno. <laughs> uh, Lake Jessup Conservation, that's got a nice loop trail that it can get wet, especially this time of year. In the Black Hammock Wilderness, that's another one that's you know, really nice. Got boardwalks that uh, are really nice. It takes you through a swamp area and, uh, and it comes out in the open. It's, it's, it's a neat place as well. Anyway, that's just a few. I mean, Marlbed Flats, that's, I should mention that one. Uh, you guys know in October, First week of October or so, what's special about Marlbed Flats? You do? Okay. Sunflowers. Yeah, the swamp sunflowers are spectacular. I mean, just everywhere you look up there along the northern shore of, of Lake Jessup, it's a blaze in yellow from these uh, swamp sunflowers. Very, very cool. What's, what's the best way to get those pictures? We've been looking at those for years. I guess unless you're in a drone or on the on the water in an airboat. Well, Marlbed Flats has some hiking trails that go out there. Yeah. And, yeah. You go out to the you, you go out through the Oak Grove, and you end up out on the edge of the floodplain for Lake Jessup, and you can't go too much further, uh, especially when the water gets a little deeper and deeper as you go. Uh, but you can get out if you get out past the the trees. Then, if you have a telephoto lens, uh, you, you're not really that far from them. Uh, you can get some pretty decent shots. Unfortunately, I didn't have any in the slideshow where I would show you. 
No, they do. We're just as best ball. Oh, they were. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You can't take a drone out there unless you get special permission because of the it's close to the Sanford Air Force. Oh, my so you, you gotta you gotta call in and get permission. You can, but it's I I haven't done it. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So uh, another one I should mention is the Ocala National Forest. Uh, I've been on the yearling trail up there. Uh, if y'all know the story of the yearling, the Gregory Peck movie. Uh, there's the homestead there. There's a cemetery way back on the trail, the, the family cemetery. Uh, they've got headstones there from, uh, I believe, one of the family members. He was a, uh, a Confederate Army officer, and it shows it on there uh, from the Civil War. Uh, so it goes way back. And people have actually left bullets on the, the base of the uh, tombstones. That it's sort of a tribute thing, I guess. Uh, but anyway, it's a neat, a neat place to go. There's a huge sinkhole there. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go up to the Yearling Trail, that's a nice one. Uh, let's see. I'll, I think I'll tell you about my, my little hiking buddy, Sir Winston. Sir Winston, he's a Shiba Inu, a white Shiba Inu. That He's five years old now, and I got him when he was just a few weeks old. Uh, I was inspired by my daughter, Sheba, who used to go hiking with me, Cooper, this is his name. And this dog was very, very attuned to what's going on out in the woods. I had a lab before named Rudy that used to go hiking with me. And he's always had his nose down to the, to the, to the ground, never really looking around, just sniffing the whole way. We ran into a 600-pound uh, sow one day with piglets. You know, just uh, you know, 40, 50 yards ahead of us on the trail. And I stopped, turned around, pulled on Rudy. He never saw the, the sound, never once. Winston sees him before I do, senses him before I do. He's very, very attuned. Yeah, one of the reasons Shiba Inus are one of the oldest dog breeds on the planet. They're very, very uh, genetically one of the closest relatives to a wolf. So they're, they're, they're pretty in tune. He, he, he walks down the, ta the trail, his head's on a swivel, always looking around. He's never down sniffing on the ground occasionally, but he's always looking around. So I love that. He's a great, uh, a great buddy to have on the trails. Uh, he is actually very famous in Oviedo. Uh, he's the most famous pup there in Oviedo. Everybody knows Winston. Uh, they, uh, I was on the trail at Lake Harney one day and a, a group of ladies were, were uh, hiking the trail with us, or, or hiking the trail that we encountered. And as I got close, I noticed they started taking pictures of us. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And as I got closer, I heard one lady say to the others, hey, there's Sir Winston and his human. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'll take that. I mean, it's, he's, he's, uh, he Dave has things. added the sir to his name. <laughs> he's just Winnie at our house. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so. Well, he's so distinguished. When he hits the trail, he is Sir Winston. Okay. At home, he's just Winnie. <laughs> and he's a real mama's boy, too. So uh, uh, let's see. Uh, over the years, I mean, when I first started hiking the area here, I, did, I really didn't do much photography. I just went out for just for the thrill of hiking. Um, and uh, you know, as, as time went on, I started noticing more and more things out there that like, got my attention. So I started taking my, my phone camera and I'd take pictures with my phone camera. And then eventually, uh, my wife blessed me with a, uh, an actual real camera for Christmas one year. And that was it. I was hooked. Uh, I just started taking pictures of more and more stuff, and I noticed more and more. Uh, I mean, it used to be I'd get a wide view of things, you know, maybe sunsets, sunrise, some landscape stuff. Then I started homing in on things, smaller details, finer details, and it kept drawing me further and further in. I'll take pictures of dew drops now. Or just, to me, I, I, I call them uh, little windows on an alternate alternate uh, universe or something you know it's just crazy 
they're, they're amazing. I don't think I switched to that. It might have done it on its own. Okay. I don't know. But anyway, uh, and eventually I started taking pictures. That was my primary mission when I went hiking. Sir Winston knows when I start taking pictures, he's very respectful. And when I stop, put my tripod down, he will lay down and just patiently wait for me. Or he'll roll in some kind of poop and I wouldn't notice until later. When he's, What's that on your face? <laughs> I wouldn't I, I, even notice. I wanted to ask about that because I have uh, two dogs myself and they are just, they're so gung-ho about exploring everything. I can't mm. stop and take a break, so. Yeah, you gotta watch them. They're, wow. Um, he's, uh, if he gets a chance, he will roll and stuff. <laughs> um, so I have to get him those, at the vet they have a shot for dogs that, that go out in the woods a lot because there are some nasty stuff out there that can really you know, hurt the dog. <clears throat> so, anyway, where was I? So then I started learning about, you know, what's good to eat out here? Because I noticed, I started noticing things like berries and fruits and things of various plants and mushrooms and you, know, you name it. And I got very curious, you know, so can I eat these? So I, I went on a mission of everything I found out there to, you know, can I eat this or not, or is it good? And I found, you know, all kinds of things like shiny blueberries, huckleberries, uh, sparkleberries. A lot of people not too thrilled about sparkleberries because they're, they're kind of tart. They're in the blueberry family, but I love them. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and you can eat them you know, for quite a bit of the season, they, they, they kind of, they're a tree-born blueberry. They, they make a good mix into a wild berry pie. Absolutely. <clears throat> so when I don't have <coughs> shiny blueberries or huckleberries, sparkleberries are next on my list. Uh, so there's also pawpaws out there, which uh, I find the ones on the trail don't take long for people to pick them. So <laughs> if you find some, they, uh, I don't think they're there for that long if they're easily seen from the trail. Uh, and I don't know if you guys know ever had pawpaws. Yeah, they're they're kind of like a custardy texture, like a banana and a mango. I think is what some people describe it as. Very delicious. Um, and there's some on trees and some on bushes. So there's a variety of them, I think. Uh, That's another one of my favorite spots. This is, that was my go-to sunrise spot. Uh, I'd always go out there in Geneva Wilderness and this spot was awesome for my sunrises. I'd go out in the dark, you know, hit, breaking spider webs in my face on the trail and then get out to this spot and wait. And it was well worth the wait. That's one you can't get to right now, right? Well, yeah, I was there this past weekend. It's a little soggy, but you can get around most of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that one there is on the Lake Harney. Just, I was mesmerized when I saw that. The way the lake reflected that sky. Uh, I'm just sitting there, and then I eventually I'm like, hey, let me take a picture. <laughs> so I did. Um, so I didn't mention dewberries and hog plums. Those are some of the other ones that I've found out in the woods that are good. Uh, just love them. Uh, especially the dewberries. <laughs> so, uh, and some of these are, you know, they, they overlap some of the seasons, but you, know, you can really find a lot of that out there throughout the year, uh, different ones. So, if you know what you're looking for, you can, uh, you won't lose much weight because you'll be eating it. <laughs> Does it show? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, mushrooms. I've, kind of left them alone, even though I know a few of them that are good, uh, but I, there's also some really bad ones out there as well. And the mushroom ID sites I've had, it, it's like a Russian roulette. I mean, one guy will say, oh, that's that's a great edible mushroom. And the next guy says, oh no, it's deadly, don't touch it. So in general, I leave mushrooms alone, even though I know the ones that are good, I just leave them. Well, and there's some that people aren't supposed to mess with out there, right? 
Yes, there are <laughs> ones that'll get you arrested. <laughs> uh, psychedelic uh, mushrooms. And I've actually seen people come out of the woods with a tail of them and get arrested. They had a deputy sheriff sitting at the bar just street trailhead. And these folks came out with a thing of them and he arrested them. Now, my understanding is those kinds of mushrooms usually grow in like cow pastures. Are yes. they ever, do you ever see them out on trails? Like I've never seen any of them. Uh, yeah. There are certain I, I, I look for chanterelles, that's it. Yeah, uh, there's a, a little bit of a farm right at the front end of the Bar Street area mm -hmm. on the south side, and there are cattle in there. And yeah, I think that's there. where these people are getting, we're getting those. Oh. But you're right, they, they primarily grow out of cow manure or other manure. Um, but anyway, uh, this is Sir Winston, or Winston Winnie. Uh, that was last year's calendar cover, in fact. Uh, that was out along the, near the Snake Trail in uh, Little Big Econ State Forest. Uh, he's made the cover of my calendar two years in a row now, so he's, he's getting quite <coughs> notorious here. <clears throat> he's a lot smaller than he appears. He's 20 pounds at the Everybody most. Everybody that meets really? Winston will say, the first thing they say is, he looks so much smaller than I imagined. But he is, he's, he thinks he's a wolf. And uh, he's, uh, he's kind of hard to, for people that don't know him when he doesn't know them. He's very distrustful and will growl at people and, and bark at them until he gets to know you. Uh, when I've had people hike with me at the beginning of the hike, he, he, he can't pet him or anything. He just growls too much. By the end of the hike, they're hugging him and petting him. So, you know. Uh, again, another sunrise shot. Uh, so, see where was I? Those are the mushrooms. Most interesting plant that I've encountered out in these woods, to me, is got to be the Indian pipe. Uh, there are other names for it, uh, but it's just an amazing, fascinating plant. It's, they got medicinal properties to them, uh, and they, they're like they don't have they're they're, not, they're colorless. They come up almost translucent, and then they, they bow over and got a flower pot at the top, and they all look more like a mushroom than a, a flower. But, uh, I think they're covered in shit and oak, aren't they? Uh, I've only seen them in, in oak areas. It could be they're not a mushroom though. They're actually a plant, and uh, very fascinating. If you ever see them, I've, I've only seen them in one place. Where, uh, where out was it? Geneva Wilderness. Uh, I'm on the south west yeah. shore of the certain places you can find them there. Ah, well, I've, I rarely see them, but uh, after a good rain, that's when I that's when I would see them. Is uh, there a certain season for like those types? Because I, I I think I saw some. Um, not too long ago, but I'm not sure exactly where it was, it, except for the fact that it was on that one um, scrubby oak trail at Geneva Wilderness area. I'm yeah. not remembering exactly where it was or when it was, because I'm doing field trips with like little kids, mm -hmm. and I don't remember exactly. Unfortunately, I don't trip. know the precise timing of those. Okay. If I went through my pictures and I saw the stamp date on it, then I could tell you. But I don't think I have any Indian pipe in this presentation, unfortunately. But uh, that's the observation deck. Uh, like, uh, like where it was. Uh, if you guys haven't been there, highly recommend it. Uh, the view's fantastic over the, the Lake Marty floodplain. Um, outside, on the back behind you, is the uh, there's a forest that you go through, primarily oak. Uh, you have a question? Does natural lands give you any trouble for being there before it opens? No, actually, they've been opening before dawn. Oh, have they? Oh, yeah. I get out there at 6.30 and the gate's open. Now, last year, that wasn't the case. Last year, they, the gate was closed uh, after sunrise, which that, I didn't like that. Well, as being a, a, a natural lands contractor, I can say is, is that you can park, if there is an area to park on the outside, like at Lake Harney Wilderness, there's like a little turnaround area yep. just before 
over the gate um, you, and you're there before sunrise uh, and it is closed, you can park there and they won't mind. Just like at Geneva Wilderness area, there's like a, a, a front parking area and then the gate and then the nature center. That's the floodplain out at Lake Harney when it's got a little bit of flood living up to its name. A little bit? Yeah. It, uh, when it's sunrise and the reflections in the water, it's like I'm snapping pictures. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. In fact, I gave away a canvas print of this at the Maya Vito store last year. Uh, no. Yeah, last year after our calendar drive. Uh, another one out at uh, Lake Harney Wilderness. Just sometimes I go out there for sunrise and I'm expecting a spectacular sunrise and I don't get what I was thinking, but then when I look in another angle, a different way, I get something like that. I mean, that makes it worthwhile. So it, I wasn't discouraged. I just looked for another way to, uh, to, to view it. And lo and behold, I'm seeing things like that. Uh, now this one here is a, an interesting photo. That it's so that's another one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen on my 25 years of hiking in this area. It was uh, sunbeams in January that were just powerful. They looked like jet afterburners, and I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The one on the left is the raw image of the the, uh, the beams as, as I saw it, and on the right there's a tree and in a different, uh, this was in the Econ River Wilderness, this tree looked like Jesus on a cross. And I combined them, and that's what the one on the right looks. Uh, it's, I just, it's just one of those things that stood out to me. So, thank you. <clears throat> that's another one of the beams that, uh, you know, they were, like I said, it was like a jet afterburner. It was incredible. Uh, and I've only seen them like this once or twice. It was in January, it was like 30, between 30 and 35 degrees. There was fog, and the river was creating a lot of mist off the river. And when the sun's going through that, that's what happens. Oop, a little too fast. That's out at uh, Econ River Wilderness area. Just another good sunbeam morning. Same place. Uh, that was at the back of Geneva Wilderness. Just like, take this path. <laughs> it was beckoning me to go down that path. It was lit up. Awesome. Uh, some stories about some of my hikes. I've had a lot of interesting things happen on these on the trails. Uh, I told you about Rudy and the pig. Uh, I've been growled at by bears three times two years ago. One of them was a mama bear and a cub 20 yards away from me. The hair on the back of my neck stood up and I'm like, uh oh. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen the movie The Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio. I thought I was about to get DiCaprio'd. <laughs> so anyway, she was, it was in the, believe it or not, that one was in the Riverside Park off Lockwood. It's just a city park almost, but behind it, the little econ river has a trail that goes back in the woods. And that's what we were on uh, a ways back. She was about 20 yards away across the little big, e the little econ, but it was about a foot of water. I mean, it wasn't very much. And she wanted to come across. I don't think she would have had much trouble. We backed off. Winston didn't bark, nothing. Uh, he, smart little dude. Uh, we backed off and she did not pursue us. And that was the closest I've had an encounter with a bear back there. <clears throat> uh, that one wasn't nearly as strange as in the Bar Street trailhead. I was heading out to the river and I saw this disheveled guy. Uh, he looked like, one of, if you've seen that show, The Walking Dead, he's kind of walking around like this. Oh boy. And I'm like, ooh, that don't look good. He wasn't even on the trail. He was walking through the woods toward the trail and he walked right in front of me and I said hey good morning and he growled at me <laughs> he literally growled at me and at that time I noticed he had a hospital wristband on I'm like oh okay so 
of course, uh, at that time I was hiking with my dog, my, my daughter's dog, Cooper, Shiba Inu. He pulled out of the collar and ran frightened back to the trailhead. <laughs> and go back to the truck and find him under the truck. <clears throat> anyway, the, uh, some other people were hiking too out there and they, they described that same guy and they were scared by him. So when I got back, I called the uh, deputy sheriff. He came out and bless his heart, this guy was a little, little bitty guy, I don't know, maybe 120 pounds wet. And I described where the guy was, where he was heading and all that. And he, he said, I'm calling for backup. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so anyway, that, oh, one time a, a week before Christmas, I'm on the floor of the trail left by the Econ River off of Stone Hill Road. There's a bridge there, you take a trail along the river. A week before Christmas, I'm walking that trail and I found a $100 bill. I mean, what are the odds? I looked around and thought, somebody's filming me do this. I'm going to pick it up. They're, going to, they're filming me. But no, nobody there. So uh, the 100 bucks came in handy, and I wrote on Facebook, if you can give me the serial number, and I'll give it back to you. <laughs> Joyce claimed that. <laughs> in fact, this is off that same trail uh, where I got that Sunday. Uh, it's a great trail to go when the, when the temperatures and the, the uh, dew points are just right. Sunbeams <coughs> come through. <coughs> and like I said, when you see the, the fog and steam and mist coming off the river, that's the best time to see sunbeams coming through the trees. When the sun's coming at just right angle, uh, they're just spectacular. Another jet engine version of a sunbeam. That's uh, a palm tree that just just lit up like crazy. I, you just don't see that stuff. It's like yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, oh, I've also gone out in the woods and uh, I've tested. I'm a, I'm, I work for the army. I'm a contractor for the army, a civilian contractor. And I work a program called Soldier Monitoring System, which tracks uh, soldiers with the GPS that they wear. And then we have the uh, operations center. We can see all the guys that are out in the field, where they are, and on the map and all that. They call it the God's Eye View. Uh, I was able to test that gear out in a little big econ uh, with some, uh, some workmates. Uh, somebody would wear one, head off down the trails, and uh, we would track them. You know, there's a little uh, picnic bench there in the Bar Street trailhead. So I'd, if it was me sitting there, I'd have my laptop up, watch where the other guy was going through the woods. You know, it's, I, I, I still can't believe back at the time when they would send me to all these different places, like West Point up in the, uh, the mountains up in West Point in New York. I'm like, I can't believe they're paying me to go hiking and doing this. Like, this is great. So, uh, Anyway, we got to do that. Uh, next, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, well, the uh, uh, the efforts we did for the, the Econ River Wilderness Area back in 2020. There was a developer that bought across the river. I'm sure you all are very familiar with it. If not, it's uh, he wanted to do high density housing over there but that's part of the rural boundary. And so he wanted to swap it. Uh, 600 acres on the other side of the river for like 250 acres, in the, the uh, Econ River Wilderness area. And uh, that ticked a lot of people off, including me. So uh, they, I went, I'm not a public speaker by nature, you probably all can tell, <laughs> but uh, I went to the county commissioner office and brought slideshows to show the little big econ or the yeah the econ river wilderness area show them here what's this is what's at stake uh, what you're going to lose if you turn this over to a developer who was going to put high density housing apartment complexes shopping areas uh, just a beautiful place just gone 
And uh, I talked to Channel 9 News on the footsteps of the uh, commissioner office there. Uh, they interviewed me and they, they ran a thing on the Channel 9 News about it. Uh, showed my pictures of the area. And, you know, it's, <coughs> it, it was uh, a big deal because I've been hiking that area, and, like, in fact, all of Central County for 25 years. I didn't want to see it go. So, Save Rural Seminole was heavily involved, so they were also at the commission meeting. Uh, that's where I got to know Dave Bear, uh, Rob. Uh, Parmalee. Rob Parmalee, yeah. Sorry. But anyway, uh, we went to the commission meeting and did their piece there. And what looked like originally, like they were going to grant the swap. Eventually, after we did all that talking to them, uh, I'm not just saying just me, there was a lot of people there, including the Save Rural Seminole. The, the net result was they voted four to one against the swap. That guy, that developer was not happy. Uh, he, he had spent, I don't know how many millions of dollars on that property across the river and just couldn't do what he wanted. So he wasn't very happy, but we were. Uh, let's see. Now, yeah, I've done uh, calendars the last four years. In fact, I did, the first two years, I did these calendars for uh, all the proceeds went to Save Rural Seminole. I just donated all the proceeds to them because I, I felt strongly about what they were doing. Uh, that's called a fog rainbow. It's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah how's that bar street? That's my truck out there. I'm the only one there. That's rare. That, it is. <laughs> I've gone out there in the mornings before dawn and it's like half full. Like, what? So, <clears throat> anyway, it's. You never know what you're going to see out in these woods. You know, that's why I have a camera with me, because I, I just don't want to miss it. Um, that's so I mean, awesome. I mean, it, you don't need a spectacular sunrise to be fascinated. I mean, you can get down to the, the smallest things and find something amazing like this. It's like an eye, like a cat's eye or something. <laughs> and the sun being shining off the Dew drops just caught me. I'll just skate through these. Not too fast. So when you're looking for the dew drop photos, do you um, go out specifically on a foggy morning, or like what are the conditions that you're looking for? Well, it has to be a, a fairly dewy morning or after a rain. Okay. If it rained the night before, you're going to find a lot of them. If it's dewy. You'll find dew drops coming off. Like the next few days should probably be pretty good for you. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how many times I've set up. It's it's not the easiest thing to catch dew drop because they're hard to focus on. Uh, I have to set it to manual focus, and then I turn the lens until I see it. And if I want it to automatic, I hit the automatic and then the box, and I'll get it over that, or I'll just leave it in manual. Uh, it's it's. It's not as easy as just, to, oh, just take a picture. You gotta work at it, so. <clears throat> and then uh, there's a few more of the dew drops. I've kind of categorized them on here. As you've probably seen, I had sunrises. And <coughs> now this is getting into some really cool <coughs> photos of cypress and all. This was off of Deep Creek, which I don't know if you all, you all know where Deep Creek is. It's off of the uh, St. John's River. Uh, when you go through Lake Harney on the north side, the first river or uh, intersection you have with another waterway is the Deep Creek on the right. And th these next few pictures came from there. I was stunned. I mean, just, it, it was amazing morning. These are all like cypress roots. It, it was just, I was mesmerized. So what's cool about Deep Creek is it's um, like hunting land, like it, yeah. it's permanent, or not permanent, it's like private hunting land on one side and mm -hmm. then Volusia County on the other side, I yeah. believe, right? And it's yeah, I believe all you're right. <clears throat> it used to have posted signs up in there when you go up in Deep Creek, all along the riverbank, mm -hmm. or the creek bank. 
<clears throat> that's the St. John's River right there. Just caught it at sunrise with the water was reflecting everything. It was beautiful. Where's that at? I see the cell phone tower in the back. This is the Kilby track off of uh, Highway 46. Okay. Right before you get to the Jolly Gator. Okay. On the right hand side is the Kilby track. Uh, it's primarily used as a hunting track. Mm -hmm. you, you hear gunshots in there. And, uh, we just ignore that and go deep as we want to. We don't go all the way back because that's where they're shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it's a great place to catch sunrises and all because of the, the openness over the St. John's floodplain. Mm -hmm. So that's a great place to catch sunrise. But uh, I wouldn't go out in the summer there because it's hot and there's no trees. Winter time is the best time to go there. And, uh, <clears throat> these are more reflection photos of cypress uh, trees and roots. This is out a little bit of the Econ River Wilderness area. Uh, these are a few more from Deep Creek. So this is the Econ River. The, it's an outstanding, designated as an outstanding Florida waterway. And you can see why. Uh, kayaking through there just uh, I don't know how I'd even describe it, it's just awesome. I've taken my kayak all the way from 419, the boat ramp there, all the way out to the Jolly Gator and the St. John's River. So that's a little bit of a hike. How long did that take you? All day. Because I've done it from uh, 419 to Snow Hill, I haven't gone yeah. the other rest of it. Yeah, we did the whole thing, and it's an all-day adventure. Especially if you stop and do stuff, and have lunch on the bank, and do this and that. Anyway, these are these are Econ River photos here. Just awesome place. That was off of Lake Lake Norris, uh, going on the Blackwater Creek when I was going out to Lake Norris. Just had a huge cypress trunk, perfectly aligned over the water. I mean, it, you couldn't take a level to make it any more level. Another on the heading to Lake Norris. That's on the uh, Econ River. Go down the south off of uh, Bar Street. You'll see that if you go down along the river. Yes. Um, along the river. Then there's some flowers. I captured some uh, some of the flowers. I'm not sure if that's a meadow beauty opening or if it's. I kind of thinking it is. Anybody know? Sebastia. Anybody? <clears throat> Rexia? I've got one. I've got one later that looks more open than this and had the spider in it. And that was a bit of beauty, so I'm kind of thinking. Uh, there's a uh, uh, mushroom growing on a pine tree. I've never seen one actually grow on a pine tree like this before. So, yeah, again, I'm not the greatest about identifying mushrooms, so I left it there. There's the, uh, that is a green link spider. That's the most awesome spiders to me. They're, they're green and just amazingly beautiful. I've only seen two or three of them all the hiking I've been out there. And this one caught the corner of my eye, sitting on this meta beauty flower here, I believe. Uh, just begging to be photographed. So I did, and I took this uh, for my company's, uh, they had a photo contest, and it was a nationwide photo contest, and this photo won. Yeah, so, uh, won me a hundred bucks, woo -hoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that took my uh, uh, out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Good to know. It's measuring a pattern, that's all right. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it's still fine, it's helping the green leaf spider attract yeah. Well, he certainly attracted me. That's a writing spider. And if you look at the head area there at the bottom, it almost looks like Lurch of the Munsters or Adam's family. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I saw. But I writing see. spiders have this distinctive web pattern like this. They're really amazing. What was it called? Writing spider. Right. Mm -hmm. I see those fairly often. Uh, this one, I don't. I don't remember the name of it, but uh, 
I mean, it just, it was just a cool spider. It had like a cross on his abdomen. Uh, it, it was really cool. So I, I, I love spiders out there too, which I, when I was a kid, I used to be really afraid of them. But then uh, now they're cool. I, I love them. Another riding spider with that distinctive web pattern. If you see that out there, that's a riding spider with that pattern. And mm -hmm. there's just some more web photography out there. And then you get really close. You can actually see the dew drops on the webs. I mean, I, I took it to the extreme, but zoom in to get uh, things that people don't ordinarily take pictures of. Oop, gotta see this one. That was a really cool one. I didn't notice that uh, hornet there. I was taking a picture of that web because it just looked like a flag. You know, the way it was so rectangular and all that. Only when I brought it back home that I noticed the, uh, the hornet. <laughs> it was That's crazy. Cool. <clears throat> you never know. Now, this one here, I monogrammed it with the P, my last name. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, well, the spider did, but I appreciated it. Oh, the spider did that? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, he, he gave me a monogram. <laughs> These are really cool webs. They're called uh, domed webs. Uh, a dome spider, I can't remember the precise term for them, but they make the most amazing domed webs. They're really cool. I found most of those out uh, along the snake trails, where I find a lot of those. There's another one. And then you see, if you zoom in, I mean, you just enter another world. Yeah, the, the way the sun hits them at just right. Uh, it's like a pearl necklace with a, it was just crazy. This little buddy is in my calendar this year. I was taking a picture of the flower head and I didn't notice him. And all of a sudden I saw some movement and I, Looked around and there he was staring me down. <laughs> so uh, you're a little bit too big for me. What's that? You're a little too big for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was definitely staring at me or Winston. I don't know who. Well, he was saying to get his good side. Anyway, he made the calendar. Okay. Uh, a number of years ago, my buddy and I hiked three different state forests. Yeah. And uh, especially when we're up in the Panhandle. Every once in a while we'd stop and I'd clean the webs off of my hat and he'd clean them off of my back. <laughs> yeah. They always have me leave. Yeah. <laughs> but we never got bit. They never bothered us. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I got over my fear of spiders after I hit enough of their webs. <laughs> Brushed one off of me, you know. Um, it just, it's not just the wide angle shots out there. You just, you can zoom in and and see really magical stuff. But these here really freak me out. It's like, those are called oak tree hoppers. Anybody ever see those? Yeah, they're, they were on an oak tree out on the Yahoo Trail. And the colors just stood out to me. I'm like, wow, look at that. The ones with the bands on, those are the nets. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the ones on, like this one here in the middle of the branch with his back towards you, right? <clears throat> but uh, it was crazy. I saw them for several days and I stopped to get pictures. It was... They look alien, I've never seen anything like Oh, that. they're so cool. I've heard them called thorn bugs. Yeah. <clears throat> the one that I've heard is oak tree hoppers. Yeah, and, uh, <clears throat> of course, everybody's familiar with these. Uh, posed real nice for me there. That one is a little different. That's a, uh, anybody know what that is? No? Yeah, scarlet-bodied wasp moth. It's a wasp moth, that's right, very good. And in fact, I did that at Geneva Wilderness. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, very good. Down here. A wasp moth. <clears throat> and of course, the dragonflies. I mean, that's, everybody takes a picture of a dragonfly, just mm -hmm. you have to. And there's uh, the in flight. 
<laughs> okay, now we're getting to some of the animals here. This, that was out at Lake Harney Wilderness, the bald eagles out there. I never go out there without seeing bald eagles. Well, they have a nest on there. They got a big nest out there. But although that tree where the biggest nest is, is dying. Yes. They're going to have to move. Uh, this one was posing real nice. And that's out at the same place. Uh, barred owl. I actually called this owl in. Oh. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> Don't ask me to do it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, a good buddy of mine was showing me uh, how he was calling me. And of course, I did it. And I was amazed when I saw that guy fly right up to me. Oop, I missed that one. The same one. And there's a uh, uh, red shouldered hawk, uh, red tailed hawk. Uh, they just those things they squawk i mean if you ever been out in the trails you're going to hear them from a mile away I mean, they're just making all kinds of racket you can't miss them and there's uh i don't know why they call it a red belly woodpecker he's got a red head but i guess i you can't see his belly here red belly yeah anyway he posed for the camera and, uh, this guy here has is a special story with this uh, particular picture. This uh, hawk, red-tailed hawk, he followed me around. Uh, this was at the Econ or the you know, Econ River Wilderness area at the time that that all that thing with the developer was happening, and they had guys out there surveying the property and they were putting flags on oak trees that were going to be cut down and all this. It was crazy. When I went out there, this was the day, the morning of the meeting in uh, Sanford at the commissioner's office. So I'm, I'm hiking it and say, well, might as well get in a hike here before they tear it all down. And this guy followed me around. I'd never seen anything like it. Normally they fly off and rah, 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 rah. They, they make a lot of racket. Followed me and when I put my camera up, he gave me a high five. I mean, he lifted his, he lifted up, he gave me a high five. And uh, I showed that to the commissioners too. Said, you know, this is a sign, you guys aren't, I took this as a sign that they weren't gonna approve that land swap. And I told them that, so. Yeah. Just uh, drying his wings out there along the Econ River. Uh, vulture. And uh, pileated woodpecker, you guys have been on the trails, you hear those all the time. You got a very distinctive uh, sound. I know I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the hoot owls, no. Uh, this was out at uh, Orlando Wetlands, actually, where there's the reflection of that, that hair in there just beckoned for me to take a picture. And there's uh, Sand Hill out on uh, Geneva Wilderness on the pond. He was showing off. So this doe was on the Yahoo Trail, and the first thing that I saw thought of was the uh, from the movie uh, uh, the Wizard said, "You shall not pass." That's what I was. In fact, the caption on my Facebook page when I put put this one up was, "You shall not pass." Did she stomp at you? No, she didn't stomp. She just stood her ground for a long time. I've had them stomp at you before, and it's just like I'm, I'm trying to be respectful and wait for you. Mm -hmm. They just—they're they're so ornery. Oh yeah, I used to have them follow me around at the Econ River Wilderness. Yeah, yeah they, they got used to me in Winston, and they were—they follow us around there. That's fun. It was crazy. And the raccoon washing his hands in the river. And this was in the Econ River, way upstream, and I was like very surprised to see them there. Uh, in fact, the water levels were getting low, and very soon they were going to be trapped in pockets there. So I walked up, they were on the opposite shoreline, and so Winston and I walked down to the riverbank, and they were curious. They swam right over to us to check us out. Uh, there was a little baby in there. You don't see it in this one, but uh, they came right over and checked us out. So I called uh, Fish and Game, and told them you know, where I saw these. They wanted the coordinates and all that, which I gave them. Because uh, they said if, if the water got any lower, they would be trapped there and they'd have to rescue them. So they, uh, they wanted to know right where they were. Uh, I think they said SeaWorld or somebody would send people out to save them. Okay. 
uh, too fast. Um, yeah, there's a big old boy that had a he had some fish in his mouth there when I got his picture. Uh, water was very low, as you can see, it was pretty clear. That was along the trail that goes out to the Flagler Bridge from the Jones Trailhead and Yahoo Trails. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But, uh, there's a trail that goes all the way along the river to the bridge. He was out there. I kept Winston all the way from the shoreline. That's a different location in the Econ. Big old boy. That's a hefty one. I think he was about 12 feet long. <coughs> he was in an area that I used to see this gator all the time. In fact, I called him Wally. That was my nickname for him. Uh, always went out to see Wally. I got a lot of pictures of him. Uh, one day I was out there and I saw some guy, you know, teenage boys out there swimming on the bank near there, right where Wally hangs out. And like, hey guys, you don't want to swim there. There's a huge gator. And they're like, oh, we're okay. Don't worry about us. Okay. Uh, off I went. So I told you. I don't think I heard them any issues. So they got lucky. Oh, by the way, Wally's not there anymore. I haven't seen him in like two years. I don't know where he went. And Inga, uh, we, a couple of turtle shots I got here, a tor tortoise. Uh, so you never know. This was along Lake George. Just an amazing stand of cypress knees. I was walking the shoreline of Lake George when I was going up near the Yearling Trail. And this just jumped out at me. I said, I hate to be running along that riverbank at night or that shoreline. Did you get on your knees for that one? <laughs> no pun intended, right? Those look pretty tall. I don't know. Some of them are pretty tall, but you know, I, I probably stooped down. I can't remember. This is back in 2019 or so. This is doing the Yahoo trail in the morning, always looking for sunrise. Oh, by the way, the Yahoo Trail, awesome place for shiny blueberries and huckleberries. Uh, I make pies and stuff out of them when I get enough of them. It's, there's a lot of them out there. Coming into season for them, too. Yeah. Do you ever run into an issue like while you're hiking, like having bikes coming down that? Yes. So you if have you to go like out of the stuff. Jones Trailhead, that's a very popular biking area. Mm -hmm. So I tend to go. My favorite time to go there is like Friday morning for a dawn hike. Nobody there on bikes. If you go on the weekend, all bets yeah, are off. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> and they come up on those trails pretty quick. So if you're hiking, and especially with a dog, you just got like that, get out of their way. Mm -hmm. So that's, I don't recommend it during the weekend. And it's just a floodplain of Lake Hardy. Uh, <clears throat> it's the Florida Trail along the Econ River out of Bar Street. And that's uh, the Ditch of Doom. You all know about the Ditch of Doom? It's, uh, there's a ditch on the back of the, if you go off the Jones Trailhead, where the bike trails are, uh, there's a ditch that runs along it. And the way they call it the Ditch of Doom because the banks are so steep along parts of the trail that if a bike, and it's kind of corby, swervy, if they miss step there and fall, they got a heck of a problem going down that bank. So that's hence the ditch of doom. And uh, of course, you know where that is. Uh, it's flooded just like, like that now, I think. <clears throat> Fishing pier in Geneva Wilderness. Yeah, the dock is closed indefinitely for however long it takes for the water level to be yeah. so. Uh, after the hurricanes, Geneva Wilderness was closed for like six months. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's, uh, there's the current cover of my 2024 calendar, Sir Winston. Uh, that's along the Econ River up uh, off the Florida Trail. And sometimes you walk through the woods. This is a special brand of photography that has actually got a name for it. It's called Paradolia. Anybody know what that is? Exactly. Like if you look in the cloud and say, oh, that looks like a whale, or oh, that looks like somebody's face. Well, it, it goes for other things too. Uh, I, I call this like, you know, I had the strange feeling I was being watched out there on the trail. 
And this looks like some Revolutionary War era guy with a wig on, kind of looking out at me. It freaked me out when I saw it. <laughs> I mean, that's unaltered. That's that's exactly what I saw. Crazy. And this one here, I call him King Grumpy Cat. That's actually cypress uh, roots sideways along the river. And I flipped it up this way and looked like a cat with a crown on smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at it like this, that's the way it is on the river. It's kind of hard. Johnny Depp is a cat. <laughs> yeah. I call him King Grumpy Cat. That's cool. And yeah, there's uh, yours truly up in the tree. My, my daughter took this one of me. Uh, when she went hiking with me one day, and I can remember her saying, hey, Dad, you know, I was hoping for you to fall. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a great shot. <laughs> That's at uh, Econ River Wilderness, isn't it? No. No? Oh. No, this is uh, along Bar Street, Florida Trail. Oh. Yeah. The other side of the river looks like a spot along Econ River. Yeah. I think that's all the pictures I have. I mean, through them. Um, are there any questions? I guess open it up to, you know, how I take photographs. I mean, I could talk a little about that if you want, or if you could just ask questions. We can, we can do power for you want. Okay. Uh, I will give you a few hints that along the way. I'm, I'm a self-taught photographer, by the way. I, I didn't go to school for it. I just learned the hard way out there. Uh, and I'm still learning because even last week I went out to try to take pictures of some eagles in flight. And before I did that shot, I was taking close-up shots, you know, like the mushrooms or something. And I had it on manual focus and I didn't take it off. So then I put it on, I've got a great eagle set up and I'm just firing away, G, 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 G. Every one of them was bad because I had it manual focus. So you gotta, you gotta pay attention for one, you know, make sure you set your camera up for whatever you're doing, for catching wildlife, especially once running or in flight or whatever. Make sure your foot, your camera is set to the proper capture methods. Uh, you know, fast, fast shutter, you know, boom, 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 boom. Okay. So yeah. like automatic or something, or like, I don't sure know that. cameras or anything. Is there like an auto feature where it just like you take a picture and it auto focuses and stuff? You can do the auto. But uh, for capturing stuff at high speed, you want the, my camera is Canon and it's got a sport mode. Mm -hmm. If you set it sport mode, you can, uh, I mean, you take, it's like I said, G, 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 instead of takes them really quick. And that stops the, the motion. So that's for, for, for those. For macro shots, you know, like close up things, I mean, obviously, I talked a little earlier about how you, you want to start off in manual focus to get what you want. And then if you want to switch it to auto, once you get it in focus, you can. Uh, but it's, it's hit or miss. I mean, I, sometimes I just leave it in manual once I get it in focus because I keep it on a tripod. And if you're handheld, th those are tough to do like that. Uh, let me think. Uh, Post-processing is very important in photography. That's what I wanted to ask you. you. If you're in low light, like I usually am with uh, in, in the mornings, uh, your ISO is can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Uh, high ISO obviously results in a lot of noise, but you need to crank that ISO up in order to see things. Uh, it allows you to take uh, quicker shutter speeds uh, with less light. But the problem there is you're going to get noise in the photo. So when you have post-processing at home, you can get rid of most of that noise, if not all of it, with the proper tools. And I, I use Lightroom and Photoshop uh, to do that. I have a, just a set pattern when I get home. Uh, I throw it all in the Lightroom. And uh, I also do uh, photo stacking to get the clearest photos. And sometimes you take a picture of something that's something's out of focus near you and in focus far because you're focused on that far thing. But if you do a focus stack, you take several pictures and you take a different focal point at each uh, shot, and then you stack them together, you get crystal clear from up near to far. 
when I do that is I, I throw it into Photoshop, which has a great uh, layer tool that stacks them, aligns them, and then blends them. And then you put it, it exports it back out to Lightroom. And at that point, you get a tack sharp picture. So, and you also reduce noise. Uh, Lightroom has a noise reduction tool in it, but I use an external program. Uh, uh, Topaz AI is what I use, not AI, Topaz Denoise, sorry. Uh, Topaz Denoise, I run them through there uh, from Lightroom, and it does an excellent job of taking the noise out of photos, even if you're up 1,600, 3,200 uh, ISO or even higher. But you gotta be careful with that too, and that if you, if you have a landscape shot, you got trees that look fairly crisp but with a lot of noise in them, if you do too much uh, denoise, then it makes the trees, uh, 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 they lose their sharpness. Mm -hmm. So it almost looks more like a painting than it does a picture, a photo. So it's a, it's a you gotta kinda play with it <laughs> to get it. Uh, it's just something you learn to do, and eventually after you do enough of them, you know what to do. So, uh, but photo stacking is very important. <laughs> one of the big tools I use, especially for uh, <coughs> a lot of these sunrise photos over the ponds. There'd be like six or eight photos stacked together to make that. Oh, because like stuff in the foreground is probably blurry. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Yep. So, uh, anyways, I'm open to any questions, uh, photography methods, trails, whatever you want to ask. So, Yes, ma'am. I I uh, send mine out to a, a place I've been very happy with. They're in Miami, but if I send it out on a Monday, I get it by Friday. Uh, and I've sent them out for people who buy photos from me. They they say you see one you like, they they tell me, and I'll make the arrangements with the with the company to get it mailed actually to them. So it'll show up at their doorstep. If they see it on Monday again, it'll be on their doorstep on Friday. A very good company. Uh, I've, I've used them for several years now. Uh, I did have a gallery page, it's called Smug Mug, but I wasn't very happy with their pricing. Uh, they handle all the sales of my photographs and they store my galleries on there. But uh, I thought they were overpriced. So I, I quit them, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm in the process of putting it on another site that uh, they actually store your galleries for free and then they they take a commission off any sales they do. So and they seem more reasonably priced than the smoke bug one. So that eventually I'll have a gallery up where people can browse if they like something. So, yeah. What, what kind of camera do you use? I've got a, it's not a, high-end camera. It's a Canon 8Ti. Uh, it's a great camera. Uh, it's probably on the low end of a professional camera. It's not It's not like these high-end ones. And it, it's not a mirrorless one. It's, it's a regular DLSR uh, camera. And I've replaced the lens on, that came with it. I think it was an 18 millimeter lens with an 18 to 400 lens from Tamron. And I never take it off. I can get close-ups with it, and I can get vast landscapes with it. It's just been perfect for me. Uh, yeah. Do you have uh, problems when it's uh, foggy, the lens getting uh, wet? There, yes, this is the time of year where we're starting to get foggy lenses. Uh, they doing? have some stuff you can spray on a cloth and wipe your lens, uh, anti-fog spray. It helps. I mean, it's not perfect, but it does help. But I always take a, uh, a cloth with me, one of those ones that are... Microfiber. Microfi thank you. <laughs> I'll take a microfiber cloth with me in my shirt pocket, and I'll wipe the lens from time to time as I see if it's developing anything on it. So, yes, sir? I find the worst time in pocket is when I have the AC on in the van, how to get out. Yeah. And you have to wait. 15, 20 minutes for it to equalize, and then you don't have to worry about the fog so much. 
Yeah, I've, I've seen it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, and I'll tell you, I, of all the pictures that I've, that I've saved and put in my galleries and all, there's tons more that I throw away. It's just, you know, thank goodness for digital era, because if I was in the film era, I'd, I'd be wasting a lot of money on whole rolls of film wasted. And that'd be rough. Yeah. So the digital cameras are great. I, uh, yeah. I would love to have gone through film and knowledge of uh, digital and what a difference it makes. If you don't have to worry about your spot, but you're shooting so much and you get clear away and then get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you also have to see whether you have the picture you want to go on. Yes. Right, you got instant feedback. That's yeah. true. So, uh, but again, you still have to go through post processing, which, uh, I mean, it's... He takes a lot of time. <laughs> it's a lot of clicking, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. It's a good thing he's retired, huh? He's so, not yeah. retired. <laughs> I, still, I still work for the Army. Yeah. Uh, Have you ever seen a television show? <laughs> yeah. Although I don't watch TV much anymore. Uh, I'm not too busy uh, either taking pictures or processing pictures. <laughs> so it's been my life lately. But it's a good one. Uh, I wouldn't trade it. Uh, but anyway, it's, you know, it's just something I enjoy doing, and you know, it's, uh, it's a pleasure here to talk with you guys about a little bit of it. Uh, this you. is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I've got thousands and thousands of photos. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's nuts. Well, like using your photography in advocacy is just, just, it's absolutely awesome that you were helpful in getting the success of stopping that swap. Because uh, yeah, that was a really big issue that a lot of us were really concerned about. Maybe not everybody, uh, you know, maybe not everybody knew about it, but if they did know about it at that time, they would have care. And like, knowing that you were um, a part of making sure that the commissioners knew what they would be destroying, basically, like voting to destroy, uh, you know, having, having, you know, the pictures, it's just awesome. So, pictures, I, the picture speaks a that. thousand words. Do. He do. actually sent pictures, the gallery of pictures he had to every commissioner before the meeting nice. oh, <laughs> to, yes, make to make sure, sure that they had at least the opportunity to see what they were saying they want, were going to let be destroyed. They all got calendars too. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Nice. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. So what is your favorite trail? Do you have one particular one that you like the most? Um, they're all so great. Every, there's so many memories on every trail I go on. I mean, I, I can tell you a story on every trail, but, uh, I'd say probably my favorite. Um, I'm going to say it's the uh, you know the Florida Trail that goes along the Yukon River that you know, out to uh, uh, to the Flagler Bridge. Mm -hmm. I've I've had Joyce drop me off at uh, I'd like park my truck at uh, Bar Street and have her drop me off on the Jones Trail on the other side of the State Forest. I just hike all the way through, but that Florida trails, it's spectacular. I mean, they don't call it the Florida National Scenic Trail for nothing. Uh, the only problem I have with that is it, on weekends it tends to get busy. So uh, that's when I go see, you know, some lesser known trails. I once went off trail and I lost my phone out in the swamp. Oh, no. And I thought, well, that's it, it's gone. And then I posted about, about it on my web page and somebody wrote on there, oh, I I think I found your phone. I'm like, wait a minute, you went off trail? <laughs> yeah, I was out, out in the swampy area. So sure enough, wow, uh, you found my phone. That's crazy. What uh, are the odds? Yeah. <clears throat> Did you ever have to run away from an alligator? Uh, not run away, <laughs> but uh, we have had some encounters with gators that where I walked up to a bank and Wally was on my side of the river that time, 12 foot gator. And when I stepped off the trail, just a couple of steps, 
Wally just thrashed out of the, some tall uh, weeds along the riverbank. Just, I mean, it was like a tidal wave when he went in the water. And good thing Winston was behind me. I always go down first on that part to make sure we're okay. Uh, yeah, that was close. Uh, <coughs> another time, which I really don't, I mean, I hate to see it, but people feed gators out there. And that's a death sentence to that gator eventually. Uh, I walked up to the riverbank and 100 yards upstream was a gator, I don't know, maybe eight feet or so. When he saw me on the riverbank, it was like a torpedo. He, he swam at high speed all the way up to the bank where I was at. Stopped and looked straight at me. I mean, obviously he'd been fed. And that's, eventually they're gonna trap that gator and probably kill it. It's sad. You saw naked ladies out there one day. Oh, I didn't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> then she brought it up. I was hiking one day along Bar Street in the clearing there. There were a couple of naked ladies. They were in a blanket. And I pretended not to notice. I kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> Are they legal to do that? Like, yeah. Playland Beach is like legal to do I that. I don't think but, like, so, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, There's nobody enforcing that. I told my buddies, I told my buddies when I got back, and they're like, they said, what, you didn't introduce yourself? <laughs> no, I did not. No, <laughs> so, I, I wasn't offering. <laughs> I quickened my pace. <laughs> oh, man. Smart man. Million stories out there. One of these days, I'm going to write a book about all of it. Yeah, that's, I, I, I've actually got couple hundred pages written on part of it, which I don't know, I'll refine it and all that. But, you know, when I first started hiking, it was just for hiking. And I, uh, it was more, it was like a health tip to go out there and just go from point A to point B as fast as you can. And that, in six months, I dropped 60 pounds, just hiking. And uh, then I got a camera and it, that was put an end to that. <laughs> yeah. What's the typical distance you hike and what's the longest you hike? Uh, probably the longest. I'm not one of them ultra marathoners like you see on some of these pages. Uh, probably the longest I've done is probably about 10 miles around here. Uh, generally, I try to keep it a little shorter, especially in the summer because I don't want to bring water and all that. Uh, in Winston, I got to take care of him. So, uh, yeah, it's, I've done some 10 mile hikes, but I, I try to go less. So, any other questions, comments, or anything? Okay. Uh, I want you all to, I'm not sure how many calendars I have in here, but you all are welcome to just grab them. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to go home with them. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. So, <laughs>